terveystilanne tässä vaalimuksessa. Vielä tulee se yhdessä. Eikä nyt on valittu tähän tuon etämään tämä tilanteen festivaalin kansainvälisen osuuden nuotaminen. Eli tuon tähän meillä tämä on esitettynä monta hyvää niitä puhuja, kärkiä, kiinnittäviä. Sitten jota niin, tämä keskustelu sisältää, jos hän vie tänne yleisesti, niin tässä keskustelussa tarkoittaa käsitellä maailman, Euroopan ja Suomen turvallisuuspolitiikkaa näkökulmia Yleisesti niin tilanne on se, että, että meidän tällä hetkellä mielikymys on maailmassa, niin kuin jos historiassa on niin syyttäisiin niin tuolla yhteen, niin toisaalta kiinni oli kiinni osa, että toisaalta saa elää mielikymyksiä aikoja historiassa mielessä, että tämä viittaa siihen, että mielikymys on ajat historiassa, että mielessä on yleensä ottaa yleensä kussallisia vielä aikana eläkymyksiä mielessä. No, ei saa mitään, että on mielessä, että ne on vaan mielikymyksiä ja Ehkä siellä on merkittävä tuonne. Mutta kuitenkin, tilanne on se, että Usan ja Länsimaiden niiden dominoiva domino maailmanjärjestelmä on tärkeää tullut rahvoisella määrin epävakaaksi. Ja tämä on se kiinnostunut tämmöistä kilpailua erilaisten ympäristöjen voimien. Missä tilanne totta kai johtaa juuri saada rahvaa määrä, konttia ja poliittista epäilystä muuta vastaan, mikä tällä hetkellä pystyy meillä keimään uutista, jos on ansiota jopa varmaan myös sellaista No. Kehitysvaltio on hyvin pitkäaikaa kuntoa, eli meillä on maailmanjärjestelmä, jota lännen suhteellinen taloudellinen vaikutusvalta on heikentynyt, mutta saa nyt poliittinen vaikutusvalta ja tämä sama vahtia vähentymässä, eli konfliktiolta, mikä saa varmaan, että se on tässä. Eli kaikki tulee suhteen vastaavalta kuluun. Kiitos tästä. Ja meillä on tilanne, jossa on huomioon, että kaikki jäljitään hakinnan, kaikki tietää, ja päätös heittää työn ilman minkälaisia pitääkkeitä, niin usalla länneen tehdä, niin niitä sitten tämä päämäärä tulee viemään Suomen jälkeen on omia näkemyksiä, mutta niin ta... se on yleensä, että osa näitä näkemyksiä on ollut kukkaan jälkeen. Kyllä, että meillä pistää, että mitä tässä ehkä vasta seuraa ja miten paljon se tekee tilanteen, ja sitten heillä on omat kysymykset esimerkiksi, mitä he haluavat kertoa. Seuraava itsestäni, että niille Kuten luulin, minä olen Jari Karttunen, demokraattisen sivistysliiton pääsihteeri. Myös tavallaan tämän keskustelun vetäjä ja Suomen kommunistinen puolueen keskustelun jäsen. Tämä sanoi, että tämä on myös kommunistinen tilaisuus. Lisäksi olen myös tämmöinen filosofin maisteri ja valtiotettä tohtori, opiskelija ja eri kaikkea olen pidetty tämmöisen jostain niin alikehitettyn vaan tilanteeseen uskollisen imperialismiin ja yritän heidän teoriaan, että vihreän imperialismin teoriaan. Ja se on ilossa niin kuulin, että joskin, että toverit maailmalla ovat heränneet, jos saman tavalla se ajatus on käsittelyyn, että vahvistaa, että on ihan samperin, että tällaiset hyökkää hyväksyvät teitä. Sitten tämä tilanne, että tämä on tämä tilanne, että 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 tämä tilanne, Eli jos Liisa Tappinen ja Attila Painaisi, siis paikan päälle. So, basically, I ask you, 
Não. Estou três vezes. Sei lá, porque eu já tenho uma foto de quatro minutos, mas eu não. E para a sala, please. Op je eerste plaats, houd je je binnen de koele tijd op de woord aan de eeuwdag. Weer elke woord specifieke is het tijd van de woord aan de eeuwdag van de eeuwdag van de eeuwdag van de eeuwdag. Zo, deze de noten. Dit is mooi. Zo, achter de wijnheid. Erwan, wat zijn de gevolgen van de carrière en werken we achter de wijnheid? Ik ben er maar te maken met de wijnheid. Dank je. Eh, wat ben je? Dear comrades, thank you very much for the uh, invitation. I am very happy to be here and meet friends, comrades, uh, uh, old friends and old comrades, and young friends and young comrades. And uh, I am uh, uh, happy to represent the European Lab, part of the European Lab here in Helsinki in the World Festival. I am a member of the Secretariat, the political Secretariat. And I am a uh, chairperson of the Red uh, Party of Hungary 2006. And uh, uh, I, I hope uh, to have uh, uh, a, a meaningful uh, uh, talking and uh, debates. And uh, I hope we can uh, be much clearer than uh, after the festival than before. Mm -hmm. so, uh, situation uh, we can uh, um, uh, evaluate the situation only generally because uh, everything what is happening in Finland, in Hungary, or in Germany or other countries, it depends on the on the uh, deepest uh, crisis of global pandemic. What is happening? Uh, everything is happening because uh, the, the uh, global capitalism try to find uh, some exit from this crisis for their benefit. First of all, uh, to, to have new markets, new oil and gas fields, and, uh, and of course, uh, they want more power everywhere uh, to, to, to have uh, uh, possibility to rule the world and to keep uh, the superpower of the United States of America. Thank you. Näitä päivänä tulee neljä vuotta sitten, kun jäin eläkkeelle. Tein 40 vuotta lääkäritöitä. Ja sitä ennen opiskelin lääkäriksi iloisessa neuvostoliitossa 70-luvulla. Ja varsinkin nämä viimeiset vuosikymmenet olivat niin semmoista terveydenhuollon kriisit. Kehittyminen oli hyvin tiivistä työtä ja niin, että sinne jäi paljon tilaa ja voimavaroja poliittisen osallistumiseen, vaikka jos kohteen yhdessä, mutta se oli liittynyt jo 52 vuotta sitten, eli nuorena. Ja, mutta nyt jään yllättäen itselleni ja olen sitä kohteen puheenjohtaja jo puolitoista vuotta. Ja hyvin mielenkiintoisia on ollut nämä kuuluneet, kuuluneet tuota puolitoista vuotta ja hyvää mielisiä, mitä oli varapuolehtajana ja korjelmistolle. Yhdellässä minä olen sanonut lähettäjien maailman poliittinen ja maailman tilanne on niin kauan, että muuta voi sanoa. Ja mistä se nyt johtuu? Mitä on? No. Ilmasto- ja toistokriisi on se joka oikein saadaan taustalla ja näyttelee paljon asioita. Minun nähdäkseni kaivuttelisin käytännössä korokamppailua. Ja, ja tuota, noin, oma logiikkansa mukaan yrittää vielä selvitä ja täydetä ja, ja tuota, noin, maksimoida voitot, ja, joka johtaa siihen, että eläkeleikin yrittää saada niin vielä, vielä saada maailman luonnonvaroja, luonnonvaroja uudelleen uuteen ja uudelleen, joka 
eu que não estou a ou colocava-se a amassar e me contar ver como tem mais uma jornada, pai de irmãos. E a gente me encontrou a gente para a loja que está na Colônia, onde mais caras está. E a gente diz que ele é contar. E o posto é o que está se trancando Israel, Palestina, Presidente, eu sou bem, eu não sei se 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 eu não sei. Eu escuto mais a minha tela e eu sei que eu não sei se 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 eu Tätä USA on USA oli sitäkin mahdollisuutta, jos haluat niin sanoa. Lopettaa teidän kaikki, jos haluaisi, koska ei saa ottaa sen tuttuvan USA tai USA puolesta ja uskon ja hyväksymästä. Mutta Israel on niin kuin USA on tämmöinen tärkeä liittolainen ja hyvä saa tuttuvan ja kyllä täytyy lähi tässä tehdä, kun joku on tuttuvan ja hyvä saa tuttuvan ja hyvä saa tuttuvan. Mutta tämä on kunnolla se koko maailman kotiskelemista ja tämä matkaa kotikunnassa. Tämä on siis ihan niin kuin oma ajattelun tietysti, että minä koko ajan nyt aina lyhyen, että se on ihan niin kuin se on niin vaikka olla tietysti, että sillä pitää nyt se kuin. Ja minä sitten minä koen olen nyt sitten. En tervi ihan Svetlana Saksa. Svetlana Saksa on professori, kirjailija, antropologi, historiat ja myöskin vuoden 2005 Nobelä Rampalkinnon joka on yksi ehdokas tuhannen tietyn tietenkin ajatellisessa ryhmässä. Ja lisäksi äärimmäisen tämmöinen tuottelijas akateeminen kirjan ja yli sata kirjaa, joka on tehnyt uskonsa suorituksesta. Hello, Svetlana. Hello. Very good. So, basically, can you tell us something about yourself and then we give maybe some brief idea how do you see the work of it? Thank you very much. Greetings from Ljubljana, sunny Ljubljana, and hoping you have a nice festival there. Um, what I think about uh, the situation today uh, is like uh, the most of people think today we are on the verge of something what it's going to be we don't know but uh, the main uh, issue today obviously in order to survive is among other goals is uh, fighting fascism and fighting the far right wing which is ambitiously preparing for the next situation which is uh, strong, which is uh, well-financed in most of Europe and also in Slovenia. And uh, what are the strategies and uh, what do we have to do? Uh, I'm thinking mostly about uh, the, this mass of citizens, this mass of people who inhabit my part of the world, Slovenia, which is a very small country, um, and there are historical examples of what we could do uh, as feminists and women from the left. And uh, what has to be done is basically use the mental, material and other capacities of women who knew how to behave in the last Yugoslav war. Uh, this last Yugoslav war was also the war for women's rights which unfortunately after the war uh, were failing everywhere in the in the countries uh, out which became 
countries after the fall of Yugoslavia, their federal uh, framework. So uh, they never had war between them. They cooperated all the time. They uh, helped the deserters to get away, not to be mobilized for the silly war, crazy war between the neighbors and co-citizens. They were exchanging information, all kinds of help, and they never stopped doing that during the war. So in many ways, it was war on women too, not only the ethnic conflict, which was highly invented in many, many ways. So what I have to, to say is an example, a vivid example, or something that might help us in this situation. And this is the situation of the left in Yugoslavia since its uh, origins in the, at the end of the uh, First World War. Uh, this Communist Party of Yugoslavia was um, banned uh, almost only two years after it uh, became a party, after it was founded. And uh, the king of Yugoslavia proclaimed something that we called a parliamentary dictatorship. Uh, being illegal, the communists uh, found their way to spread the knowledge and to spread the ideology by penetrating the bourgeois circles uh, and having um, a great back backup and a great help from women, educated women who were spreading the ideas. So let's say that intellectuals, <laughs> communists who survived, and the uh, educated elite women were working together in spreading the ideology, uh, which was cut rather short, uh, beginning of the 30s by uh, Stalin, who put up the new generation of communists uh, in Yugoslavia with Tito on, uh, as the head. And it continued the same way. Uh, but at the German expansion and attack on Yugoslavia, there was a completely new situation in a very short term. And that is that communists had to go out into the country. They were not more, uh, not anymore the urban community. They had to fight outside in the mountains, in the fields, which they did. But of course, they lost any connection with uh, their urban society, urban circles, which were sympathizing with the communists. They faced the rural women, basically, because men were already engaged in fighting on one on, on, on the other side. As you know, Yugoslavia had two, at least two whistling countries inside it during the Second World War, the, the Croatia and the Serbia. And uh, uh, these men confronted with illiteral, illiterate women who didn't know nothing about feminism or anything else, let alone the communism itself, but communicating with them without media. Only personally, they convinced these women in an unbelievably short period that communism or socialism is better for them than anything else. And they accepted it. And in one year, we had a whole network of active women, mostly literate, who were uh, assuring the base, who were logistically irreplaceable, and at the same time defending the new ideology. So uh, already in 42, 1942, women had their anti-fascist front, they were promised and given all the rights, of course, only on the liberated, liberated ter uh, territories, and they knew what they were fighting for. So after the war in uh, 45, uh, there was a very curious situation in which uh, Communist Party had members something like 10,000 and more, uh, 30,000 and so on, but the anti-fascist front of women had million members. <laughs> and more. So what really happened is that it became the strongest political force in post-war Yugoslavia, which was caring for wounded, for lost, for orphans, for the social situation, for building up the country, which was totally destroyed and so on. And, so on. and unfortunately, in 52, the Yugoslav Communist Party uh, broke up with Stalin, and consequently, in a couple of years, also the anti-fascist front was kind of dissipated because, yes, it was too numerous and was a strong political force. So these examples show us that women are capable of understanding the social situation much better than the warring men. 
and they are capable, not because they are naturally peaceful, not because they are, have another character, but because they are, they are taught by patriarchy how to behave, how to catch the faults of the other, and how to fight inside. Thank you. Thank you, Svetlana. Tämä on tämä mainitsen koko vielä, että alkuperäistä ohjelmasta täällä on myös vielä ne yhtenä kuin Peter Sparta, kun on saanut tätä ne kuuma suhtaan etelässä. Mutta nyt olemme tuossa kun tiedon finaalit kuuluu ja kuuluu työ, mitä ne viettää täällä vanhanaan. Seuraavaksi jokainen sen viinaali pitää ja pitää ennakkoa valitettavasti esitystä. Ja pyrin on tämä esitys, että noin 10-15 ja ajan sanoa, että jokainen esitys jättää esityksen, ja tämä esitys on tilaa muutamalle kysymykselle. Mutta niitä, jos ette saa siihen muutaman kysymyksen, lyhyen kysymyksen, niin ehkä noin viisi minuuttia, että saa kysymyksen, niin saa käyttää kysymyksen, ja niin voitte kysyä, että tämä ei kaikkien luentojen jälkeen ole varmasti noin puolisen minuuttia, ja sen keskustelujen kysymyksen jälkeen. Ja jos ette tästä vaiheessa, niin Keksit hyvä kysymys, tai niin voi olla porua, niin kysykää sitten ne se lopussa. Eli tässä vaiheessa me ensimmäisenä pääsemme Attilan oman. Attilan, you are the person. So basically you can keep your presentation. Maybe something like 10 to 20 minutes. Less. Less? Less. Okay. <laughs> It takes, uh, it takes and uh, then about five minutes of questions. Uh, so basically, go ahead. I, uh, I, I try to, to have my presentation uh, slowly. I as I understand that uh, everybody knows, understand uh, what we are talking about. So uh, first I would like to explain that uh, I am a materialist. So uh, I try to find explanation of different processes uh, uh, with help of science. So I think we can find it in case of processes, even of society, of human society, of or civilization. So now we are talking about a uh, security uh, uh, policy, uh, about security of, of society. Uh, in my understanding, uh, we are talking about security policy it means that masses of people are afraid of something, and politicians promise that defend them. Yes, it is a big business. You know, when uh, you are afraid uh, somebody or some countries or uh, you you are you are you are ready to pay. You are ready to, 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 to give everything. You are ready, ready to, to uh, even to join the yeah, I, uh, You understand my uh, heroism, of course, uh, but it is, it is a, a really, a really uh, big uh, deal. And uh, uh, I, I think yes, they are, yeah, people are thinking that they are in danger, they are ready to pay for everything. So when we call big corporations and banks want to have more market, oil and gas fields, and cheap workforce, they will tell you that in a special country, they have a very dangerous government, dictatorship, dictators, which are dangerous for us. They are terrorists, and maybe they will come to our country, they will take your job, and they will, they will kill you. Major of your society, you say, oh, stop, it is, it is very, very dangerous. So I don't want, I don't want to take my job, my home, my, my family, uh, they, they don't want, I don't want to kill, kill me. So please defend me. Yes, they are ready to defend, of course, uh, uh, for your money. Uh, so, uh, when we are talking about security policy of capitalism, we are always talking about security of the capital of biggest companies. But we, as a communist, and not only materialism, but communist, 
we have to talk about security of the people, of the majority of the people. We have to talk about a new type of society, where is the most important thing is not a profit, not a capital, not a big, uh, security of big capital, but the security of the life, the real or life. Uh, yes, we have, have to open, uh, open this thing. Uh, what, what is real danger? It is a social inequity. It, uh, it, it, when we are living in Poland, then we, we uh, they really take our poor homes because we cannot pay for the banks. Uh, um, and, uh, and a lot of people are losing their jobs, not because of the terrorists uh, from Africa, but because of terrorists or, or the bankers. They are really, really terrorists. It is a banker terrorist. So uh, when we are talking about the security, it means we, we have to take money, public money, and to use for a public services, for, for education. For education, but people who are educated, they will not believe for that uh, vice, what we are doing. Uh, we, okay, uh, we hope we, to be more educated so the, the more uh, we can defend us uh, uh, from this uh, lies. Uh, yes, we have to have to uh, have a new type of society where uh, we are using public money not for us. Uh, war, it is certainly not to, to defend us. War force is to, to, to keep big power, to keep superpower over the United States of America. Firstly, now what we see in, even in Ukraine, even in Israel, in Africa, in different, different countries of the world, because unfortunately now we have war not only in Ukraine and Israel, but in a lot of regions of the, of the world we, we see. Local, where local wars, wars, what we are not hearing about, there is nothing about in, in the media, but it, it, it works for, for them. And we are paying huge amount of money, public money, to buy tanks, to buy uh, fighters, and to, to do warships, and, and to, to pay salary for this. Uh, military um, leadership. And yes, uh, uh, to pay uh, uh, to, 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 to for some point, strength and name. I, I want to give you a, a short history of Hungary, uh, uh, how we uh, joined to NATO, because it, uh, uh, you, you, you can think uh, how, how, how to act against this uh, project. Uh, in Hungary, they said we need to, to join to NATO because we can join to the European Union only after the joining of NATO. Okay, it was right. But then, uh, major the people, they want, very, very much wanted to join to the EU. Oh. So, they were ready to, to vote for the uh, name. Uh, it, um, we uh, had um, uh, a referendum. It is because we fought for that. They wanted to avoid referendum. They, they always wanted to, to avoid referendum, not to understand that. But we managed that we had in Hungary referendum. Okay. They changed the law because it had a law. But uh, uh, referendum is valid when more than 50% of voters participate. Before the referendum about NATO, they changed the system, and it was enough uh, to have uh, um, uh, 25 percent of some votes. Yes, to have yes. But they hope the majority of the population of voters will join, uh, will vote on the referendum. But they didn't. Why? 
because we had a campaign, uh, we explained that uh, if uh, after the after the joining of NATO, they will change the law about the nuclear power. Why? We oh, okay. After the the collapse of uh, Soviet Union, uh, uh, we had a new law about nuclear power. But in Hungary, we can use only only nuclear power only for the power stations. Peace purpose. So it was forbidden to use in any forms nuclear weapons, even keep on the territory on Hungary, or Hungary, even cross the, the air uh, territory of Hungary, it, it was forbidden. We said, we predicted, yes, after the joint event, they will change this law, and they will allow for the USA to use Hungary as a territory for their nuclear weapons. Because we understand that Hungary for them needs only because we have a territory closer to Russia. They said no, no, uh, of course NATO for the democracy, to defend the democracy like in Turkey, you know. Uh, uh, NATO is, a, is a, only a defending system that we don't want to, to, to attack anybody but yes, they they acknowledge that they, they can change the law about the nuclear power. Three, because we asked them during the campaign what what we had. And this was the turning point about the nuclear power. Uh, before this campaign, about 60% of the population said yes we will go to the to the uh, referendum and we'll okay 80 or 90 percent uh will vote uh the vote uh what we need yes uh, okay but finally less than 50 percent 90 uh, 40, 49 and start something voted only for the referendum. so in hungary nato has no legitimacy has no legitimacy leg 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 because less than 50 percent of population voted for the for joining. So we we have to use our minds and our our knowledge and to explain to people what is the reason uh, and what will happen uh, after the joining of NATO. I believe in Finland will be this turning point okay without referendum but the majority of population will understand that uh, yes NATO not for democracy and we have to create a new type of society, and for us, it is socialism. Thank you. Thank you. Now, do you have some three questions in the last part? I'm Nita Dyson, and hello, Aktiva. Uh, nice to see everybody in here on the festival. And and it's always important to stay and hear the European left perspective and of course more exactly the Hungarian perspective. I have one question, but before that I would like to present the artist on the wall. Arvo Lehtomaki here has done the show we can see here. And in the show or in the exhibition of Arvo, they are already the communists are already in space in the future. So my question deals with the future too, like Arvo. Uh, when do we need the civil society and NGOs in the future in the European left action of uh, plan of action? The question is very concrete and very good. I I think uh, Maybe he believes that that socialism for us it is a, not a plan from the from the top. Socialism it is a it is a, a job um, of of people. So socialism will be uh, how we can form the new type of society. It, it depends on us. It depends on the local uh, communities. It depends on 
trade unions, it depends on, on different cultural organizations and communities. So it is a real, for, for me, it is a, a real social union. And uh, I see that uh, in the European that, which is a big coalition, why? I, I, I would say why I, I, I would have a lot to have a big coalition, but not a wide coalition. But, uh, but generally, uh, because of the previous model, and, uh, because of the building of the, uh, or, uh, of the new type of so, uh, the society, it can be one socialism. Uh, I see that Europe and that is very, very open uh, to this type of civil non government organizations, um, cultural organizations, trade unions, uh, uh, communities for for uh, for uh, for uh, defending, uh, protecting uh, uh, not only generally but locally for an environment against the uh, big companies and you know. So it is a real mass movement. Without even part, uh, 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 participation in the Communist Party. The Communist Party is only a top of on, on the last on Mass movement it is not a movement of the, of the party members. But mass movement it is a workers, it is a people who, who, are, who want, uh, want to form their local places, their local life, and their, for their area and communities. So it is an understanding in my, in my opinion. Of the, of the social and the, and the, and the, and the like, you, generally. One more. Okay, thanks. Uh, my question uh, relates to the uh, immigration and, and European Union. Uh, how, how do you see, uh, because I understood that Viktor Orban is populating himself as some kind of EU skeptic maybe anti-EU, but he is also very anti-immigrant anti uh, prime minister. So I'm, I'm just interested to know, um, does Orban see anything used in this fortress Europe, if you will, or is he, do you see that he is he better to prevent the immigration as national level only? And, and also, if I can ask short question, very strong. How um how how is the elective stance in a Hungary for, for the European Union at the moment and the English? Okay, not so really. So then I was talking about um, the danger terrorists who are coming to our country and they will take your home and jobs and lives. Uh, I I was talking about the policy about about the policy of for the migration uh, in European Union. Orban is not only one, not a special one. Orban is a product of capitalism. And now what we see in every country, even in Finland, that this policy is going on. Even from today in, in Finland, they closed border because the reason for the border with Russia, because migrants, basically people, and they, I, I don't know. The migrants are coming from Russia and they are very agents. <coughs> it is an urban space. See? So, yes, it is a general a capitalist, it is a pro capitalist, an extreme right policy. Yes, extreme right is a crisis of because the, the global crisis of capitalism, because of the social, social, because people, who people try to find. The uh, place where they can be. Not only uh, work, but they the live uh, because they are speaking uh, uh, their homes uh, because of the wars, civil wars. So, uh, uh, Orban only, only maybe it was first, but now it is a process. And then finish. And uh, you know, how we see in even in Hungary. Yes, we understand this process, and uh, we understand that uh, we, we have, firstly, um, to stop the crisis which makes people uh, to be weak. This crisis stops. Then we can solve the so called uh, crisis. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Yes. Yes, your interpretation Can you uh, is interpretation from who is uh, English writer for you? I didn't hear that. Sorry. So no no interpretation. No, I didn't hear that. Could you repeat the question? So basically, we are asking you just your interpretation of what? If I speak Finnish, do you hear it in English? Do we? We do you hear it. If we speak the Finnish, we will hear it in English. Okay. 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 Muffled, so I don't hear. Uh, I hear the voice, but not the <laughs> the words. <laughs> That's a problem. Can you repeat the question? Yeah, your interpreter interpreter works now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. we are asking. Do you have the interpretation for this for you? It's so muffled I can't hear anything, not words at all. Sorry. Could you could you just uh, say it uh, uh, clearly to the mic so I can hear? No, no. Nothing comes out, sorry. That there's a problem with acoustics. I don't hear the words at all. Just voice. If the question was about the European uh, elections and uh, our positions in this, I don't. No, I... no actually, we are asking that. Can you understand with what we are speaking in Finnish? Because. Uh... <laughs> Now there's nothing. As a guy, like I can't hear you. Yeah, but um, the next, next one again. Yeah. Can someone from the studio ask me the question? Because from there I don't hear nothing. Yeah, yeah. writing something. No. Kirja, jos ei kuule, mitä täytyy palata. Jos sinulla ei tuota piuhun sisään, niin sitten sä voi olla, että se ohittaa vaan tuon. Joo. Joo, mä olen tämän. Tuleeko tässä kenties laittaa piuhinkin kompaksiin se ilmoitettuna se kysyä, mikä liitän tätä on? Joo, mä käyn tota... Sen luin tietysti tota. Joo, jos tietysti tota... Joo, tässä on tää tota... Se on vaan yksitoon näköinen reikäs. Joo, kyllä. Se kysyy jo, että onko se mikki vai kai ja reikki. Ei kysy.
Okei, okay, toi ei ole näytössä, toi liitäntä, niin se selittää. Eihän tosiaan parassa ollut mitään. Tota... Mä luulen, että pieni hetki menee, että mä löydän, tota, tai saadaan tuohon Tämä kone ymmärtämään nyt tuota piuhaa. Mä
Suomessa käytti Natoski termiä arvoyhteisö. Ja se niin kuin kyllä säädäkin korvaan pahasti. Mutta arvothan on, että mehän tietenkin tiedetään, mitkä Naton arvot on, mutta ne ehkä me ajattelemme siihen eri tavalla kuin mitä Nahtisarja ajatteli. Mutta sitten Venäjä, Venäjä hyökkäys Ukraina, mutta lopulta kansan enemmistönkin mieli. Kun vielä vähän aikaisemmin näkee, niin se oli vielä yli 60 prosenttia ihmisistä oli Naton liittymistä vastaan. Hyökkäys oli shokki. Ja nosti pintaan talvitavan muistut ja perunut uudesta hyökkäyksestä Suomeen. Ja kun ajatus on kolme kansan sydestä, että se onko tuolla seuraava. No, tätä shokkitilaa käytettiin hyväksi. Ja ilman lupattuu kansanäänestystä muutaman kallupin perusteella eduskunta käytti aina Naton jäsenettä. Ja nyt on tämä tuossa. Ja tilanne on muuttunut vähän hyvin pitkälle 30 lukua. Ääriöitä on se Euroopassa ja Suomessa ja sitä mieltä ne hallitukset. Ja sehän ei ole jäänyt huomioimatta maailmaa. Euroopassa sovitaan. Ja Venäjä voi hyvästä syystä pelätä hyökkäistä Ruotsin välissä, eli meidän Suomen itärajan kautta, Suomen maa neljä ilmatilan kautta. Ja nyt vielä enemmän kuin käydään neuvottelusta ja kuulosan kanssa näistä yhteistoiminta-alueista, että en ajattele neuvottelut sujuun kuulosan haluaa. SKPn mielestä NATO ei tuo Suomelle turvallisuutta, vaan päinvastoin tekee Suomen potentiaalinen 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 ja on näin, että ei näytä tulikohtia Suomeen. Lopetettava neuvottelut USA on kanssa toimivallisesta yhteistyöstä ja tukikohtien perustamisesta Suomeen. Ei ymmärretä edes yhdysvaltaisesti Suomen maakera ja ilmaisuvaltaan ja alueita. Ei suomalaisia joukkoja, vaan ei sotila toimivallisuudet maailmalle, aina tänne kokoavasti vaikuttaviin. Ja NATO ei ensin yritä huolimatta Suomen on hyvä yrittää hyökkäyksiä, että kaikki maat, Suomen maakirja, ilmatila ja merialoita ei saa käyttää hyökkäyksiä, kun ei jäänyt mitään muuta kautta vastaan. Nyt on pieni hetki, mutta minulla on hyvä kysymys, että minkä on sitten tällä hetkellä. Mikä jos on nyt pari kysymystä, että saa vaikuttaa? Laitatte toi päälle. Joo. Ja to, Joo se, on, sen pitäisi mennä täällä. Suomessakin on valtavirta asioissa ja rajat kiinni politiikkaa. Niin, tota, minkälaista keskustelua on Suomen kanssa? Onko Suomen kanssa tällä hetkellä tai onko Suomen kanssa tällä hetkellä? 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 Onko Eteläisiin päivystyspaikka. Vaalimaahan on Pinelaatossa. Se on yksi kuusikilometriä mun kodista. Ja totta kai siellä on paikallismediat käynyt katsomassa ja ehdottelemässä menoa siellä kajalla. Ja nyt on myöskin valtakunnan ilouksissa on ollut käynyt meitä vielä kanssa. Ja tuota, tähän on, tässä on taas joku semmoinen Varsinainen sumutus meneillään, kun puhutaan, että ja tässä on kysymys, että ihmiset, jotka tänne on tavallaan tai toisella tullut vajalle ja hyvää turvapaikkaa, vaan Suomen ja Venäjän välisestä vähennöstä vähentelusta, mitä se nyt on, tai niin kuin ö, nokittelusta siitä, että täällä käy niin kuin Minkä niitä ihmisiä kohtaan, jotka nyt on polkupöörinä tullut, vaan, vaan niin Venäjää kohtaan vastaan toimitaan ja halutaan näyttää niin kuin voimaa Venäjälle. Että kyllä me tämmöistä voidaan tehdä, että me ei niin näitä todella enää ihmisiä ole niin välikappaleina. Ja se on sitten taas, niin kun sanotaan, että se on vaikuttaa maahan tulla, vaikka no, Elisaamilla Ankeleissa ja kansainvälisessä kaukana. 
Mutta kysymyksiä, kommentteja, kommentteja on tyyntynyt hyvää. Tässä näkyy siis nämä ovat Suomen asetukset. Again, it's my fault. Could you could you phone me? Don't hear anything. Sitten <tos> 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 Svetlana, could you yes. start? Yes, <laughs> tell me. So basically, Svetlana, do you hear yes. me now? Yes. So. So the small small microphone works. So basically, technical problems are setting, but you can start your presentation. We are very sorry about these technical problems, but we hear you very well here, actually. So start your presentation, please. Yes, what was the, the question? I didn't hear. You can and start. what was the topic? We don't know what the problem was, but... Hmm? 
Just give me the topic that was on. So, Svetlana, can you start your presentation? Yes. We hear you well. Well, yes. Uh -huh. But what was the topic? I didn't hear anything. What was the topic? I was here that you have some presentation for us. Yes, I had my presentation already. Are you gave it already? Yeah, at the beginning I had my presentation. Okay. <laughs> so, because I, I was informed that you had something like 20 minutes presentation. Exactly, which I did. Uh, and uh, the guy who is leading the meeting also gave me the sign that was my time was up. So that, that was it. But if you want some other topic, just, you know, let me know. So basically, if you have more this presentation, you can uh, keep it going, going now, maybe. Okay, okay, I will. <laughs> As I understood previously, of course, I couldn't understand much because there's an acoustic problem. Uh, the topic was also what to do with the, uh, the European level and the European elections. And in my country, in the left, uh, there, there's a lot of people who are Eurosceptics, and there are also others who think we have to have a representative. So it will be for the first time that left will, uh, in fact, uh, propose its uh, uh, candidates for the European Parliament. And I will also point to the very specific problem with the extreme right wing in Slovenia, which is connected to the Hungarian problems, in fact, because uh, uh, the right wing in Slovenia developed a media center consisting of uh, one television, one portal which comments and transfers the television uh, um, topics. And also there is a number of something like 19 e uh, portals and uh, some 20 radio stations which propagate the uh, uh, right-wing propaganda. So the money for this came from Hungary. Hungary was paying the uh, this phenomenon in, in uh, Slovenia. And in fact, this is the main problem because these media uh, did not suffer from any measures by the state. They are disregarded by many, even on the left. And I have a rather mm, bitter experience with the book that I wrote, uh, which is called uh, Terror and uh, uh, Fear, and which concerns the media, which are producing the negative propaganda now eight years. It's a long time. And they have managed to convince a number of people which follow these media and follow the, in fact, these are instructions for hate. And this hate speech is something that I'm afraid is not paid to good um, observatory tools in Slovenia do not exist for this. And my book, in fact, was isol isolated. Uh, I try to uh, not only to classify, but also to make a structure of the hate speech in Slovenia. And uh, it consists basically of uh, three elements. One is uh, uh, traditional European populism, not American, but European populism. The other is Goebbelsian propaganda, which provides for the structure of this. And the third one is uh, using the local uh, distortion of uh, several groups of people. Slovenia is very small, but it has many dialects, many different people, very, very many different groups. So the traditional ideas about differentiation, differentiation are used to produce new myths, new lies, new stories, which are then transferred, of course, to migrants. 
So the migrants seem to be the, uh, the greatest problem of Slovenia, which in fact does have a nodal geographical position. This is the place you have to, to go through to get to Italy or Austria. So it is a very special position, but in fact, nobody wants to stay in Slovenia from these migrants. So it's, it's a false story from the beginning. So if you analyze these kind of speech, semiotics of the images, uh, semantics of, of the text, you can come to the conclusion that this propaganda is based on, of course, it's silliness, pure silliness, pure madness, but considering the time, uh, not even the, the massive production, but only the time, it does gain some terrain. So when we got the new government, which was not Yanis Jansha, but uh, some kind of uh, left center uh, liberals, uh, they started propaganda the day the, the elections were done and Jansha uh, didn't get the power. The, the man who is connected to Orban and also the man who, who is doing all this and not only allowing, but also arousing uh, negative hate speech uh, feelings. Uh, several weeks ago, he proclaimed that uh, every citizen of Slovenia should provide for a weapon. <laughs> so the people should be uh, armed to, to get something of the politics. It, it's one of these ideas which really directly lead to dictatorship, which we tested and tasted for two years now. So the whole situation is that propaganda is working, even if it's small, even if it's limited to a small number of citizens, but it works in time. So we should stop it. I, I, I myself uh, was very constant in, in trying and uh, warning the government to stop this, but they didn't. So we now have this idea of freedom of speech, which is in fact allowing the worst Nazi, the worst fascist idea to be accepted because they guarantee the freedom of speech. And the distortion of the freedom of speech is one of the problems that we are facing, which is not exactly the same in, in other European countries, but more specificities, specificities, more we learn. So if we learn more about hate speech, we can fight it. And unfortunately, we do not have the uh, ally in the government. So this situation should be discussed. And uh, of course, the, the best thing of all would be the anti-propaganda. But I'm afraid that left, except in some countries uh, in Europe, has not developed the media capacities and the, the will to act upon media, the will to expand, the will to produce more um, pers perspectives, the uh, new media, the new, uh, of course, the classical periodicals like the your like your periodical, the pro provocative art, and so on and so on, and of course, this all whole, if you want, the, the problem is uh, getting worse by the fact that the left do not work enough in on the terrain, and uh, this election we should take from the, the this idea, we should take from the old communists of the 20s and 30s who knew how to work on the terrain. Thank you. Thank you. So basically, I ask you maybe you can present yourself now because uh, in the beginning there was should be some kind of presentation and uh, it was mixed with your presentation. So can you tell about yourself for the... Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I'm the member of the Slovenian left. I'm old enough <laughs> to be there. I was never a member of the Yugoslav Communist Party because we considered uh, the Yugoslav Communist Party as a kind of right-wing party. <laughs> that was, that's why... Uh, I uh, took part in uh, the students' movement in the 1968, which was very strong in Yugoslavia, especially in Belgrade, the capital. Uh, I was a dissident in, in the sense that uh, my passport was taken for seven years. Uh, I did not go to jail, but I was followed by the secret police and also beaten by the secret police. Uh, and uh, 
I couldn't get uh, the post at the university, of course. Um, I could only work in one of the institutes which were organized for um, those who should not have the access to the public word. So there, there there's, was an institute of literature which was kind of the island uh, for uh, such dissidents like myself. Uh, but then during Milosevic government, I was um, writing about his wife and himself. I still don't know why, but I was fired and uh, went to the court. And unfortunately, this, uh, fortunately, <laughs> the situation was such that I was uh, free, freed of all the indictments. So my uh, line of work is ancient studies. Uh, and uh, I had my MA and PhD in uh, ancient linguistics or history and European linguistics. And later I went also to, to literature. And uh, finally, under the influence of my French colleagues, I uh, specialized in historical anthropology of ancient worlds. But also I took on gender and uh, basically I tried to combine uh, these disciplines with my uh, uh, work in semiotics and historical semantics. So that's my profile. <laughs> I um, wasn't privileged by the Yugoslav regime. On the contrary, I was considered a dissident. Uh, when I, uh, with the beginning of the war, I moved finally to Ljubljana uh, with my husband, who's archaeologist. And uh, for 30 years, uh, the action against me being a Serb <laughs> never stopped. I had a different kind of problems in Slovenia, which is an interesting phenomenon. I was uh, considered um, uh, the poisonous dissident in Serbia, and I was very proud of that. But when I came to Slovenia, I was just a Serb. That was a good lec uh, uh, lecture in um, uh, egotism, <laughs> in mm -hmm. self-appreciation and self-construct. So for 30 years, that never stopped here in Slovenia, which is an interesting phenomenon. And it really lies on this tradition of, of very local, very regional differences between, uh, between peoples in the Balkans, which in fact do not, do not construct, do not form a national uh, bulk of, of uh, ideas and ideologies, but in fact, they unite at several moments, different combinations to form some uh, clusters of national feelings, which are based on, on uh, pseudo historical ideas and stories and, and basically fairy tales. So I was critical in Slovenia, uh, just as I was critical toward this in Serbia, and I had to pay it. Uh, in my life, uh, I, I published more than 100 books and some um, academic work, uh, lots of uh, literary work, novels, and so on and so on. Even wrote a libretto for an opera, feminist opera. And uh, uh, I published ab about uh, 4,000 essays. And I write a column in the periodical uh, in uh, Eastern Slovenia. Uh, now for 27 years. So I write and write and write. And when I went into pension, I, when I was retired, I just got much, much more time to write. In, in 20 years, during 20 years, I was uh, at the teaching uh, branch at the Institute for Postgraduate uh, Studies in Humanities in Ljubljana, and I was the dean of this institute for 10 years. But unfortunately, something really horrible happened, which many of the countries of the former socialist uh, uh, type will understand. Our school, the owners of our school were um, kind of invented themselves, and then they sold the school after 20 years. So we still even know how much we cost. <laughs> and uh, this is the situation why I, why I had to leave this. But the interesting thing is that uh, after many years of teaching, making European writing, uh, European projects and uh, national projects and so on and so on, I feel really free to do what I had to do and missed it during uh, this teaching period. And I have my students, my very successful students all over the world 
And uh, my ambition is, if I live that long, to write a book with each of my doctoral students. I already made two. That's it. Thank you very much. There are some questions here. Okay, thank you for your for your presentation. Um, I would like to ask how how a big thing is um, this so-called Yugoslavianism in Slovenia these days? It's a very interesting situation. There's a, a feeling of nostalgia among people, uh, which uh, goes from um, cognac with Tito name <laughs> to, <laughs> to some other things, which are in fact consumerist, which is in fact a consumerist nostalgia. Uh, but also there are many people who still believe in a uh, uh, socialist uh, system in uh, the sense of uh, protection of uh, the citizen, like a health system, like women's rights, like protection of children, like the network of libraries, network of kindergartens, and so on and so on. These were the practical things, and one of them, one of the most interesting one, which was a unique and then followed by many countries, was the so-called health home, uh, which is in the middle uh, between the uh, first uh, visit to, to a medical doctor and uh, the, the clinic. So these uh, uh, health homes were extremely important and they could offer protection and healing in a very short time in a very effective way. Uh, and other things which were extremely important in socialist Yugoslavia, there are laws uh, in favor of workers. Basically, you couldn't lose a job uh, because of these laws, thanks to these laws. And uh, many other aspects of socialist uh, self-government uh, were uh, not followed at all. Uh, the situation that uh, followed after the independence of Slovenia are a sort of a gradual banning of anything Yugoslav. And uh, even mentioning of Yugoslavia is not something extremely popular. Uh, you will be stigmatized immediately in the right-wing uh, media. So uh, the memory of Yugoslavia is extremely mixed. Uh, there's a number of studies which are made by the Yugoslav diaspora, young di diaspora, who went into different countries uh, during the war and after the war because they didn't have any chance to develop there in their countries, uh, which is producing a number of useful, academically sane, uh, healthy, <laughs> academically acceptable, uh, and very critical studies about the situation. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the other aspect of uh, uh, the Yugoslav past, the memories and the memoirs, is not developed that much. There are many memoirs of war, but very few memoirs of the life in Yugoslavia. So that's unfortunately a genre that is missing in, in reconstructing Yugoslavia. Also, there are many historians uh, in uh, all post-Yugoslav countries, including Slovenia, which uh, are studying the Second World War because one of the great branches of the uh, right-wing propaganda is to reverse the results of the war to uh, represent Quislings as uh, innocent uh, bystanders or fighters for Christianity. Uh, and uh, there's uh, huge debates about the victims of war, which occurred after the Second World War, when English uh, army, which was based in Austria, in fact, returned to Yugoslavia a huge number of Quislings uh, and uh, other many different groups of Quislings, in fact, who were heading to Austria to get to the Western world, and they returned them, and many of them were executed. So now that there's a whole ideology about the victims, the real victims of war, and uh, the partisans' fight for liberation is totally minimized, and there's a whole revision of the world after the war, 
in which Quislings are victims and partisans are, are brigands and criminals who were slaughtering people and so on and so on. So that there's this uh, emotional debate in which people who never saw the war now testify about what was going on. And of course, there's, there's a whole project which is not very scientific, but uh, in fact made for the media is discovering, discovering and digging up the graves of the victim, victims of the Second World War and proclaiming them without enough study, without DNA um, sequences uh, being done, done pedantly, uh, that all the victim, victims are in fact victims of partisans and after war uh, slaughtering of, of innocent people who were in fact Quislings. Uh, do not forget, these numbers relate not only to Slo Slovenians, but in fact, in much larger number, the Quislings from Serbia and Croatia fleeing uh, in the direction of the Western world. So it's not Slovenians only, it's, it's really people from, from other parts. And uh, the English army did uh, something that was extremely selfish to just bring them back. And these people were armed when they came back to Slovenia. So when you when you think about all these aspects, uh, there are so many historical sides, historical options that were uh, working in this moment that it's simply impossible to make such a straightforward, uh, simple um, results that uh, one ones were killing the others. <laughs> there was a very complicated situation. So these are the topics on which this propaganda lives, goes on, uh, mandates, uh, uh, the laws, uh, the rules, also controls uh, the publications on its side, and so on and so on. So this problem of, of killing the Quislings after the war is one of the main problems in Slovenia, although in fact it's not a problem, it's the matter of historians which are doing it honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finished. Thank you, Mara Asfar. Kommentteja, mielipiteitä ja sitten kysymyksiä. Tämä on kysynyt jollekin puhujalle, niin ehkä käsitellä, jos sanotaan kenellekin se kysymys on omia, niin kuitenkin sen mukaan. Ja jos teillä on Svetlaalle kysymyksiä, niin meillä on sitten kysymys tuohon, että viisakkaan edelleen ja käy kysymys tuohon. Tiedän, mä näen, kun kiinni pitää. Mutta hyvä, on tällä se, että joku haluaa sanoa kommentteja ja kysyä. Kiitoksia mielenkiintoisista avauspuheenvuorosta, olen Kirja Hakanen ja, ja tuota, haluaisin nostaa tähän yhden näkökulman, joka koskee erityisesti Suomea, mutta ei rajoitu meidän Suomen ulko- ja turvallisuuspolitiikkaa. Eli turvallisuuspoliittisen ajattelun lähtökohdat jos suomalaisittain katsotaan, on dramaattisella tavalla vaihtunut. Diplomatian ja yhteistyön tilalle on tullut ajatus siitä, että aseilla voidaan luoda ja ylläpitää turvallisuutta ja että viime kädessä ydinase on se, joka takaa suomalaisten turvallisuuden. Ja nyt tätä ollaan viemässä valtion sopimuksen tapauksessa. NATO-sopimus jo muutti tilannetta, mutta tämä seuraava sopimus, joka on tulossa ehkä jo ennen joulua eduskunnan päätettäväksi, eli Yhdysvaltojen ja Suomen välinen puolustussopimus, niin sehän menee paljon pidemmälle, koska siinä itse asiassa Yhdysvallat 
päätösvallan siihen, millaisia joukkoja se Suomeen tuo, millaisia aseita se Suomeen tuo ja milloin niitä tarvitsee käyttää. Se ei ole enää Suomen hallussa, vaan, vaan johtopäätökset tekee Yhdysvaltojen johdossa. Ja nyt tuota, presidentin vaalit, jotka tulee sitten näitä vastaan ensi vuoden alusta, niin niiden muun mielestä ihan yhdeksi avainkysymykset on muodostunut, muodostumassa se, onko Suomella, Suomen seuraavalla presidentillä omasta mielestään oikeus harjoittaa itsenäistä ulkopolitiikkaa. Alunpien kärjessä on nyt kokoomuksen presidenttiehdokas joka on useamman kerran julkisuudessa ilmoittanut, että hän tulee olemaan NATO-presidentti, joka pitää yhteyksiä esimerkiksi Venäjälle vain, jos hänellä on siihen Yhdysvaltojen antama valtakin. Ja että hänen oma arvionsa on se, että hänen koko kauden ei tule olemaan presidentillä mitään yhteyksiä. Venäjälle. Ja että valta on laskeutunut kenties sukupolvien ajaksi Suomen ja Venäjän väliin. Eli nyt on kysymys siitä mun mielestä, että presidentinvaalin taholla pitää saada sellaista keskustelua, että mihin me tarvitaan presidenttiä, jonka päätökset tehdään vuosittain. Me halutaan äänestää presidenttiehdokasta, joka meillä on suolaisesti mielipiteisiä. Ja meillä tämä on erittäin iso haaste, kuinka saada uudelleen rakennettua tähän maahan niin rauhapolitiikalle voimia. Ja lopuksi lyhyesti sanoisin, että ihmiset on nyt liikkeellä tai miettii paljon enemmän kuin puolueet. Ja kärkevä esimerkki tästä on palestinin kysymys. Vuosikausiin ei ole rauhanliike nähnyt sellaista ihmisten spontaania liikkeelle lähtöä, järjestäytymistä, mielenosoituksen hyödyllä kuin nyt Palestinan kysymys. Tätä samaa henkeä meidän pitää saada myöskin laajemmin rauhanliikkeen toimintaan. Minulla on vuoden kysymys. Kun niitä ei väsä, niin tuon tänne, niin kuuluu tuota Svetlanolle kieli. Nyt se pitäisi olla toi. Tämä on Hello Svetlana, I'm Ipe Väisinen, conceptual artist. I hope you can hear me. Uh, which uh, her interesting uh, opening speech from Urhakan, and I totally agree that uh, this is the time for peace action and peace uh, mobilization, and mass movements have taken new uh, initiative in Finland, not only in Finland, but I think in Europe, all, all, all wider Europe. And at the moment, we are in a media festival and talking about many. Niin joo, totta, siinä on kamera. We are in media festival, talking about many difficult and interesting topics, and one of them is the security. I wish to hear from Svetlana and Attila and Lisa, Uh, how do you see the role of Marxist, leftist media, Tiedonantaja, Questioni, I don't know, in, in Slovenia, what are the names of the Marxist media? Uh, how well can we be a tool for the peace movement? Because I think the peace movement needs the Marxist participating tool to fight all these campaigns, and like Uri Hassan mentioned. Uh, but can we be a tool for mass media? Please. 
constructive and uh, critical position. According to the I think the media is uh, very important in the part of the uh, which is not only for a uh, free speech to have uh, different opinions and, and to, to have a debate, but the media uh, is a uh, uh, part of education and uh, where we can explain processes, say, uh, what is happening in society. Uh, so, Media can be Marxist if Marxist explanation of the of the world can, of course, uh, in media where uh, we can uh, um, uh, um, uh, have articles from the Marxist point of view and other point of view, we can be Marxist too. But in Marxist media, it doesn't mean uh, only have a Marxist point of view. But it, it, it's extremely important. In Hungary, there are different Marxist media, and uh, I can tell you, uh, Marxist people, Marxist bias uh, can explain um, very different the, the, uh, the same uh, facts. But it is a normal, a very important, uh, finally, a final conclusion what to do. And uh, yes, we need. Peace movement. And it is extremely important because now is in that time when the capitalism is very openly uh, for the for the war, very openly for the uh, aggression. So uh, uh, basically, people, uh, the people, that, yes, we have to stop this madness and we have to stop wars and. Uh, we have to uh, get uh, solutions uh, not only at uh, the table of negotiation, but, but in, a, in, 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 a, in social uh, institutions that uh, give people more, more help and, and uh, money and, and uh, free electricity and free food. So, yes, it, it is in, in the in all the ways, in the ways of, of the of the of the for activity. So I I think uh, we, we cannot cannot say uh, that uh, the most important tool in media, but but uh, one of the most important tools uh, must be media for all activity. We can only reach people through this media. We can we can explain what we are thinking. Uh, use uh, using not only use the written newspaper but uh, share YouTube uh, link, uh, links, uh, share uh, videos, sharing uh, articles, sharing books, and, and so on. So it, it, it is a general difference in the media. So, yes, it is very, very important. Sitten on ollut toisemman sodan jälkeen kunnon työväen lehdistö, paikallislehdet ja valtakunnalliset, ja sitten hän jopa ryhtää jäljellä. Tiedonantoja on ainoa ennen tämmöinen kunnollinen työväen lehti, ja sitä tehdään hyvin niukoin voimavaroin, ja, ja tuota niin, se tarvitsi, ja se on niin kuin kuitenkin meidän niin se väline, joka meillä on käytettävissä. Paperi ja digimuodot ja, ja Facebook-tilut ja kaikki. Ja se vaatisi niin kuin me kaikilta aktiivista tekemistä ja osallistumista ja levittämistä. Että se todella tavoittaa, että mediamaailmassa, jossa meidät on tehnyt olla niin kuin niin kuin marginaaliin, koska valtamedialla on rahat ja välineet ja, ja kaikki mitä käyttää. Ja, ja niin kuin, tässä meidän omasta kriisistä, että tässä lehdessä täytyy pitää todella kiinni ja vahvistaa sitä, sitä jotta niin kuin saadaan oma äänemme kuulumia ja jotta saadaan antaa tilaa myöskin niin rahaliikkeelle. 
kaikki ihmiset syödyttiin ja voivat tehdä niin oman, oman median kautta. Tämä on meidän niin sellainen aika keskeinen, keskeinen kysymys todella niin tehdä, tehdä tiedonantajan tietä. Tämä on yksi syy kaikkia, kaikkia mukaan. Muuten jos, ei, jos sitä ei ole, niin mitä me sitten ei minä ole? Kiitos. So, Svetlana, did you hear yes. the question? Yes, I heard that question. Well, the Marxist debate never stopped in Slovenia. Uh, there are Marxist uh, periodicals uh, in which you know where you're stepping in. Uh, there are uh, Marxist opinions which are published, and the youth in humanities is very much oriented toward uh, debating Marxism because that's something they missed in their lives, early lives. So it's a vivid scene in which basically most of philosophers, sociologists have references, debate certain problems, uh, also feminist debate, the Marxist uh, position. Uh, so it's a vivid debate which goes on. And uh, as I told at the beginning, never stopped. This is an interesting situation because this is completely contrary from the situation in other countries from former Yugoslavia, like Croatia, uh, Serbia, and so on. They uh, virtually stopped thinking about Marxism. And there are very few articles and no publications, specific publications at all, which would be considered Marxist. So Slovenia in that sense is, is a kind of avant-garde in, in uh, this region. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, I'm Tony Bogdan and from Yonsu. Uh, so, as I was saying, I'm Tony Bogdan from Yonsu. Uh, I have pretty spontaneous questions like comment, but it's environmental crisis and climate crisis because we can separate those things from peace movement and peace activism, especially nowadays when it's getting worse and worse situation in climate and environmental thinking. So what is your solution to put these two movements together. I mean, you know, we have seen that, for example, experience revelation, what is this? Extinction revelation uh, was in Palestine, this protest. We have seen that. And Greta Thunberg has made a great announce uh, for peace in Middle East. So we have seen that environmental movement has come to peace protest, but now we have to do opposite wise. Peace movement has to come to environmental movement also. Thank you. Thank you. Kysyn sinne tuohon Tomin äskeiseen kysymykseen sen verran, että huomenna 12. alkaa tässä tilassa tämä ympäristöteeman käsittely ja Heikki Kerro siinä käsittelee nimenomaan tätä ympäristö- ja rauhakysymystä, eli tämä perusteellisesti teemme tuolla siihen. You, so, so one more. It seems that everybody has to take on the end. Okay. So the first one is the one that I want to talk about. The first one is the one that I want to talk about. Yhteistyökokous ja ää, vuorotus 
vuoden kuluttua, eli 2025 niin tulee niissä vuotta. Vielä tuosta marraskuusta 2021, presidentti Sauli puhuu siitä, että tämä 50-vuotias juhlakokous järjestetään, se täytyy järjestää. Ja sitten ennen monta viikkoa, kun hän puhuu jotenkin semmoisena, kun mä ajattelin, että hetkinen, tuossa kyllä me käytäisiin matot omien jalkojen saalta, kun kunnistelut järjestelyt, ennenkin 50-vuotias juhlakokous, juhlakokousta. Tuota, ja tällä hetkellä hän sitten ei enää kukaan puhuu. Ja nyt on sitten rahaliikkeessä ja rahajärjestöissä meidän ajatus, että ja erilaisi täällä on tietysti niin muotoutumassa olla, että tämä, tämä pitää järjestää. Ja nimenomaan se ei saa olla kyllä se tietysti muistokokous, tietysti muistoksi, vaan uudelleen niin kuin erittämisen tehtäväksi ja erittämiseksi. Tuota, ei ole oikeastaan kysymys tähän. Tämä, mutta niin, öö, tämä on sellainen, minkä edestä noin rauhanjärjestöjen täytyy tehdä, tehdä työtä. Mä äkkiä siitä aktiivalle sanon kanssa, mutta jos jää. Ja, Mila. Herra. Mutta tässä nyt alkaa tämä esitys oleva hieno lopussa. Niin. Joo. Tässä vaiheessa, jos esityillä on halukkuus, niin on vielä loppupuheenvuoro, lyhyt kommentti tähän loppuun, niin voi sen pitää. So, now participants can give their ending speech, the result. Um. Dear colleagues, uh, I, I am uh, very happy to see that uh, in every country uh, in, in, in Finland, uh, uh, we have colleagues, we have people who, who will not give up never, uh, or fight for uh, socialism, for the better and, and uh, fair society. And uh, I'm sure new generation will find to the way to, to this movement, this movement, uh, which part of this movement or the Communist Party, but this movement much be much uh, wider than we have. And why it's so important uh, to talk about uh, this movement and uh, and the uh, movement for, uh, for protecting of the or, or, um, environment, environment uh, uh, to fight against climate changes, and, and finally fight against capitalism. So I, I am happy to see you, and I wish you uh, uh, all successes, and uh, I, I am sure that we will fight together uh, in Europe, no. In every country in Finland, and uh, and uh, we can have uh, common uh, uh, events and common common success uh, in this in this So even fight and uh, uh, success. Yes. Maailman tilanne on aika kriittinen ja sen mm, lähteen oikeutumiseen saadaan todella kansallisen kokoista näyttää, että maailman johtajat ei aina Euroopasta ja, ja tämän lähteen maailmassa siihen kykeneitä halua, vaan, vaan tuota militarismiin kukkutaan ja Tiedät, mihin me ollaan menossa. Ja, ja tuota, niin, jopa, niin, tarvitaan todella kaikkein yhteistyötä ja, ja uskoon tulevaan, että niin voidaan on ennenkin jo liikkeellä, kun kansan tarvitsee sanoa, niin saatiin muutoksia aikaiseksi. Ja, 
en það gerir hún því þegar að minna um að undarlistur frá hún bóra sem er út þegar geta út um eitthvað að við erum að við erum að við erum að við erum að já, ég er svo það kannst að við erum 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 að Tómin hafi dóksið er þú hefur gert þegar þessum þegar 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 Svetla, þú ég vandi gefið, ég stýrum, vandi gefið smá eitt kommentar. Já, veri smá, veri smá. I have a quite a small comment to add, and that is that environmental problems are in fact, are offering a huge number of political exits and solutions for the left. And it should use it, grab it with both hands and control it and use it also to attract people who are kind of disoriented or not oriented enough. And uh, in Slovenia, uh, the referendum on waters, which finally got its place in the constitution uh, three years ago, was the first sign of the massive people's movement uh, in the sense of uh, thinking about the environment, but also thinking about politics and basically left politics. So let me uh, underline the importance of NGOs and their orientations for helping uh, the left and being the, one of the great allies of the left in Slovenia, and also the possibility of incorporating people who are not decided, and also uh, propagate the ideas of environment in the co context of the left solutions for the whole society. So uh, I'm really glad I was here, didn't understand some of it, but some of it I did. Uh, and I really thank you for the invitation, and I wish that the environmental fight uh, and pacifism should be the base for a more firm European left. Thank you very much. <laughs>